Welcome back, guys. It's Food Friday, Feed Your Friday. We are on episode number 10. Believe it or not, we've done 10 of these episodes. Um, this week, we're gonna take a question. Every week, I, I try and uh, mention to you guys, please leave us a comment or questions below your video, wherever you happen to be watching it. Um, we had a question come in last week. Um, <clears throat> I am a 26-year-old female. I'm eating 1,400 calories a day and stuck at 164 pounds. Uh, my goal is 155 pounds. Believe it or not, this is a pretty common uh, question I certainly get, I'm sure most of us trainers get, um, and a pretty common scenario. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what's uh, realistic weight loss today, um, and then hopefully a little bit of nerdy information about how that works, how the body actually does that, loses weight. Um, and then maybe some strategies or at least some different ways of thinking about uh, uh, your progress and hopefully may give you some different angles to, to get to that 155 pounds. So um, average uh, reasonable weight loss is about 0.5, so a half a percent to one whole percent of your body weight in fat as pounds. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you're looking at about uh, three quarters of a pound to about a pound and a half each week of actual weight loss. That's probably more realistic and um, manageable and reasonable. <clears throat> we could go to the further extreme, yes, and maybe two and a half, three pounds a week, but can I adhere to uh, that diet that's required? Um, is it comfortable? Uh, week in and week out, probably not. A lot of times it ends up feeling more prohibitive because it's just uncomfortable. So reasonable, you're looking at about half to one percentage of your body weight. You guys can do the math and take a look at um, what that number is for you. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. If I'm just starting in that journey, um, I will lose weight faster. Or if I have more fat um, to lose in the beginning, I'm also gonna lose fat, weight faster, um, fat faster. Um, so the results will vary at the more uh, I get into my, um, my regimen, whatever it happens to be. So a couple things to think about. Um, considerations, um, the m metabolism is adaptive. And that's really what we're talking about, how we metabolize uh, our calories, our energy, our energy stores. Um, a few things to think about, I'll give you one big word, thermogenics or thermogenesis, um, uh, a production of heat, another way of looking at it. Um, so the body, uh, when we talk about burning calories or burning fat, that's actually what we're referring to is thermogenics, um, how the body uses or creates or transfers that energy so that we're now in deficit and we're actually losing fat, which is our goal. So a couple things we can kind of go down the list of uh, things that affect that your resting metabolic rate. So that's my base needs at rest. So laying on the couch, breathing, blinking, hair's growing. Um, what are my calorie needs at that point? Um, now, the interesting thing about that, that can vary about 15% from person to person. So if you've got a friend who is also female, who is also 164 pounds, who is also uh, eating 1,400 calories a day, um, they may be seeing ridiculous, stupid, awesome results doing the same thing. Maybe you guys are working out together, you're stuck, she's seeing great results. And a lot of that can come into play because your resting metabolic rate is different. Every human's different and you're gonna be different at different times. So one variable to think about. The thermic effect of food. Believe it or not, it takes energy for me to digest and then distribute those nutrients around the body. Um, for fats, it's about 3% of the calories from fat uh, I use in digesting it, about 6% of the calories in carbohydrates. Uh, and here's a good number to remember, about 30% of the calories in protein I use just to digest, process, and distribute that around the body. 30%, that's a high number. Um, and hopefully we're gonna to touch on that a little bit later. So um, we've got resting metabolic rate, uh, thermic effect of food, physical activity. That's another area where we're gonna heat up uh, our energy needs. So we're gonna burn some calories. And here's another one a lot of people don't give too much attention to, your non 
um, exercise activity thermogenics, or NEAT, they call it. Um, we all know that fidgety person, we've got that one friend, maybe somebody in the office that just never sits still, they've got a pen in their hand, their legs always shaking when they're sitting around talking, nervous energy. Believe it or not, that guy over there is burning up some serious calories. All of that extra movement um, counts. The body's got to produce that energy to move those fingers, that leg, or what have you. So they may actually be onto something, that movement all day. Whereas the other side of that spectrum, we may have that friend or that um, coworker that has built their office into a shrine of laziness, and they've, their goal is to be able to arrive at eight, sit down in a chair, and not leave that chair. Everything should be accessible to them by that chair until five o'clock in the evening. Uh, you may even walk over to them and talk to them or have a question for them. They don't even get up. They just roll their chair over to you. Um, there's no thermogenics happening there, folks. So that's the other side of the spectrum. So um, thermogenics play a huge role in allowing us to create a deficit from our calories. Now, the thing is, it is adaptable. Your body sees that, hey, I'm, I'm now weighing less, so my resting metabolic rate is less. Um, I'm eating less, so I'm burning less calories through food. Um, I am moving more, but I weigh less, so I'm burning less calories. Uh, and I, because I'm eating less, I may actually feel a little less energy, so there's less of the non-exercise activity going on. So all of those can come into play when you're feeling at that, you're at that point where, hey, I'm stuck, I'm not losing any more weight. Um, other factors in there are our sleep habits, our eating habits, our um, uh, all kind of hormonal changes. All those things are, are not necessarily a linear equation. You're not just gonna have, okay, I, I started at this point and I lost two pounds the first week, one and a half pounds the second week, week three and four, one pound, 1.2 pounds. When I hit week five and six, nothing. It just seemed to stop. Um, and that's where we get stuck. It's not that it stopped, it's not to, that what you're doing is not working anymore. The body is an amazing, magical place. It adjusts, it gets um, stimulated through other means. So if I'm not getting enough sleep or um, Maybe it's a stressful week. Maybe I got fired from my job. Maybe uh, broke up from a uh, girlfriend or boyfriend. Um, all of those play a role in how your body is working inside. Um, the other factors that are our food labels in general can be 20 to 25% off. So maybe you are reading levels, your, your, um, um, your food labels, you're being diligent, you're on MyFitnessPal, um, and you've got it all calculated in, but a lot of times there's some inaccuracies there. Um, and our food accounting, so maybe we're looking at those calories, we're adding it up, 1,400 calories. Maybe you did all good all week, but you decide, hey, I'm gonna go out with friends on Saturday. You sat down, you had a good meal, a couple glasses of wine. Your 1,400 calorie a day turned into a 3,500 calorie uh, surplus on Saturday. So now that week's work has, I wouldn't say been forfeited, but we're not gonna see the same weight loss result. So all things to get con uh, kind of fit configured into the, um, the bigger picture of, of weight loss. Um, things I try and tell most people not to focus on, um, I like to call them shiny objects. Uh, one of the trainers I follow, uh, Brett Contreras out in San Diego um, and uh, Vegas now, Glute Lab, had a list, uh, he had posted something uh, the other day, he was talking about things that we in the fitness industry and definitely um, us as consumers get distracted on, and then things that here over here actually work. Um, pretty crazy list, I'm gonna read some of it. So shiny objects uh, that distract us from things that actually work, um, most of the time. Carb cycling, fasted cardio, Fasting in general, intermittent fasting, big one right now, ketogenic diets, supplements, feeling sore after a workout. Who doesn't know somebody that says, oh man, I'm not feeling like I can't walk today, the workout didn't count. Not factual. Crazy high volume workouts. So we all sit and we page through our Instagram feed or our Facebook and we see that same uh, internet personality that their workout looks like they should be bleeding. It was so hard every day they put something up not how it works folks there's no way to sustain that level um, on and on and on and on and recover from it so again uh, uh 
uh, we, we kind of uh, sensualize it because our eyes see it, we get attracted to it. Yes, that must be the solution to my problem. Again, shiny object. Gimmicky gadgets. So you go back as far as Thigh Master, you could look at some of the weird things we've got now, the, the electrical uh, stims you can put on your butt, cause you to contract your glutes. I don't know who wants to sit around and do that all day. Bad diets. Cleanses, excessive exercising. So maybe you're going to the gym every day, in and out, and 30 day challenges. All of those are shiny objects, things that are easily distracting from things that really work. Look for the low hanging fruit, easy things. Three things that'll get you started um, in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, um, no matter where you are in your fitness. So better diet, exercise, sleep. Better diet, exercise, sleep. Low hanging fruit makes all the difference and it's sustainable. So that better diet, we wanna look for whole foods, veggies, fruits, and ample protein. Remember what we talked about earlier, if we up our protein, um, we're gonna be more apt to hold on to that lean muscle mass. Um, we're gonna feel more full after our meal. And what's the important part of those thermogenics? 30% of my body's energy is gonna be spent digesting and processing those proteins. So better diet, exercise, get out and move. If you've been doing boot camp, I think my 164 pound friend mentioned, you've been doing boot camps, try to add in some strength training, some, some progressive overloads. You'll find that that really may ramp up your results and sleep, the most underrated thing most of us have because none of us have time to sleep. If you're at about seven or eight hours a night, you can get that, body's doing well, probably thinking clearly, be able to, able to interact with your day on a lot better plane than under seven hours of sleep, your body starts wreaking havoc on all sorts of places. Recovery isn't as good, stress uh, mechanism for coping, stress hormones like cortisol, all that stuff starts going up. So try to get seven to eight hours of sleep and you'll start finding you're gonna get results. The important part of that, again, diet, um, exercise and sleep is finding balance. None of the extreme measure, measures, the, the shiny objects I just listed, they all might move the needle a little bit, but in the long run, they're not lasting. I can't sustain that forever. So look at those three areas. Um, and see where you can improve little things. And it's gonna have to adapt. What you did last year, what you did three months ago, may not apply now. You're a different human, you're in a different place, your body's different. So be willing to adapt with your body, with your, be willing to adapt with your body. Um, keep it loud and proud till Monday, folks.